there are quite a few exciting things on the schedule in the next few months here in Cape Girardeau. I'm joined now by the Cape Girardeau Convention and Visitors Bureau's Stacey Dohan Lane to talk about some of the upcoming fun opportunities. Stacey, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thanks for having me. First thing that's exciting is the uh, the uh, fall tunes at twilight is just around the corner. Yes. Tell us tell us a little bit about this. I love tunes. Who doesn't love tunes? It's an award winning free outdoor concert series, so you can bring your lawn chair, a blanket, you know, maybe your spouse, some friends, kick back on the courthouse gazebo lawn, take in some free live music. So the lineup this year looks really cool. I'm in, I'm very much looking forward to it. I know one of the one of the uh, artists that I'm excited about is Dennis Stromat. He's a Cajun yeah. fiddler. And he's a very unique. He's a, I think he might be the only person that does the Missouri Cajun. I think fiddling. he does too. And he's with the Creole Spirit Group as mm -hmm. well, I believe. So that should be a really cool evening. That's right. Mm -hmm. that, that should be a, that should be a really fun one. And that's the first one on the uh, Tunes at Twilight mm -hmm. schedule. But we also have some some big events um, rolling into town um, this fall, including Cannonball Run. Yeah. Well, what what is that? Um, I'm not a motorcycle person, obviously, but <laughs> the Motorcycle Cannonball Run is a coast-to-coast -coast motorcycle relay. So they start in Daytona Beach, Florida, and they're going all the way to Tacoma, Washington. But the kicker is that they're on bikes manufactured prior to 1937. Yeah, I mean, you look at these little bikes and you're like, they're riding across the country on these things. So um, it's very similar to the great race that we had last June, where it's all these um, older vintage vehicles. This time it's vintage bikes. So um, they'll be on Spanish Street on Tuesday, September 9th for a fun evening um, as they make their way across the country. Now, the, the great race mm -hmm. had, a, had a fantastic turnout, yeah. um, a, a phenomenal turnout yes. for that. Are we, are we, are we, are we looking to, to, to for similar Something turnout similar? For, for Cannonball um, Run? It's interesting that you mentioned that because it's actually the same organizer. So we're getting to work with all the friends that we made last year when the great race was in town. Um, it is on a, more, a smaller scale than the great race, but um, we're still really excited to really um, throw out the welcome mat for them when they uh, come to Cape Girardeau. Uh, how important is that to develop those relationships with those organizers, for instance, and you know, develop those re those relationships and have those successful, yeah, those successful um, events? Just as an example, um, so the great race was coming to town. We were working with them to bring them here June 25th of 2013. About midway through that process, they called us and said, hey, could we come for the cannonball run too? And we were like, we'd love to have you, absolutely. So then we started working on the cannonball run. Well, around the same time period, the Corvette Caravan, they're caravanning from all across the country to the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky, which has made the news lately because they had those sinkholes. They're still going. Now they have like the sinkholes displayed. So then they called us and said, we'd like to come through Cape Girardeau for the Corvette Caravan. So it's really interesting. You know how you work with one event and you enjoy working with them so much and, and making those new friends and building those relationships. And it kind of has a snowball effect because now we're welcoming the Cannonball Run and the Corvette Caravan. Well, when will the uh, the Corvette Caravan be coming through Cape Girardeau? Uh, they're actually coming through the week before the Cannonball Run. Oh, okay. So Tuesday, August 26th, we'll welcome about three to 400 brand new Corvettes to down, I know, three to 400 um, to downtown Cape Girardeau. And then um, just a week from then on Tuesday, September 9th, we're welcoming the Cannonball Run. Um, we're not going to be showing them our sinkholes, mm -hmm. I, I suppose. No, no. Okay. no. I think they're tired of sinkholes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there's a, an, another fun, uh, another fun activity mm -hmm. uh, is, gonna, is going on at, at Fort D. It's yes. a, a Living History yes. Day. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Fort D does these. They do three Living History Day reenactments every year. They've got Memorial Day at Fort D, Fourth at the Fort, and then Labor Day at Fort D. And they always have these wonderful Living History encampments. They do the campfire cooking. They have the soldiers dressed in the historically accurate uniforms. They have the civilian ladies in the hoop skirts. Last year, they brought people from a couple dozen states. Sri Lanka. So it's a really amazing opportunity and it's free. You can go down there and see this history come to life um, on the grounds of Cape Girardeau's only remaining Civil War Fort Fort D. So so all of these all of these events that we've talked about, these are all free events? Um, you know, they're all gonna be free and you can get details on all of them at our calendar at visitcape.com. Now last year mm -hmm. the uh, the big thing everybody was talking about was mm -hmm. Gone Girl. Yes. Gone Girl's coming out this fall. It is. Um, is there anything that we're gonna be doing to uh, to, to celebrate yes. the, the movie? Well the mayor um, got a group of folks together and said I really want to make this special. This was such a cool experience for Cape Girardeau. What can we do to really leverage ourselves as a community? You know to both celebrate this event and to leverage ourselves from a tourism perspective. We've already gotten some emails from book clubs in Kansas City saying we loved Gone Girl. We want to come to Cape and see all the sites where they filmed it. So there is a group hard at work on how to make that premiere a really special occasion for the city of Cape Girardeau. And then we're also working on a driving tour too so that 
big fans of the book and the movie can see some of the major filming locations that we had here in Cape Girardeau. Well, tell us, talk a little bit about that. What could we, so what will, this, what will this driving tour entail? Um, so the courthouse stairs are on it, and then the bar is on it. Um, also, the bridge is on there, sure. too, because there were those great bridge driving scenes that they filmed. But it's been kind of a challenge for us because we don't really know which specific locations are actually going to make it into the final film. We have a bit of an inkling from the trailer, but we won't know for sure. So we're actually putting together two pieces. Right now, we're working on a driving tour that's focusing on locations we know that they filmed at in a major way, like the courthouse gazebo, the ones we know for a fact, like they really filmed there for a good period of time. Once the film comes out and we have time to really screen it and say, okay, this happens at this time, then we'll put together a more intensive driving tour. Now, what are you doing with the Cape Girardeau, the Department of Tourism, to help promote Cape Girardeau's uh, central role in Gone Girl? Um, the Missouri Division of Tourism are being wonderful partners with us, and they are pitching it to some pretty big media entities. And then on a local level, we're working on those driving tours. We're going to have a web page up at visitcape.com soon. You know, and emphasize that, you know, yeah, Cape Girardeau played the role of North Carthage in Gone Girl, but there's a lot more to see and do here as well. We've been talking to Stacy Dilhan Lane from the Cape Girardeau Convention and Visitors Bureau. Stacy, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thanks for having me.